Good morning. Today is August the 30th, and this is Pastor Rick's Reflections. Today I have a little ditty for you, a little thing from the um, Lutheran Handbook Part 2. thought it'd be helpful. It's called, How to Handle Yourself When You Get Angry with God. While anger may appear to run counter to worshiping God, irritation and even outright anger have been and continue to be legitimate emotions emanating from believers. Appropriate anger may be seen as part of the faithful believer's repertoire of sentiments when used sparingly and within reason. Remember, there are all kinds of things that go wrong in the world and we don't understand. Sometimes we get angry with God. God can handle that. Don't worry. But here are some steps to how to deal with that. One, identify the issues. Directing anger at God serves as a natural response in certain situations, including the sudden death of a loved one or an, or unanswered prayers. However, the source of anger may not always be clear. In such situations, take time, perhaps silently, to identify the basis of your anger. Two, evaluate your response. Consider whether your, your level of hostility compares to what you perceive God's transgression to be. Not getting a raise or failing a test may provoke a generalized sense of anger that includes the Almighty, but nonetheless should be directed elsewhere. Three, watch your mouth. Anger is acceptable. Disrespect is not. Keep the commandments at all times. Avoid dishonoring or slandering God. Four, avoid physical violence. Reject taking out anger on other people, places, or things. Wrestling with God has been attempted but seldom proves fruitful and can lead to hip dislocation and a residual limp. See Genesis chapter 32. Number five, consider taking a time out. Shunning worship is not advised. Use communion time for prayer and continue dialogue with God. Six, review the history of humans getting angry with God. You're not the first person to get angry with God, and you won't be the last. Read scripture to identify how others have worked through righteous fury. Note occasional risk of smiting, though. Ha ha. Number seven, identify and accept your own responsibility. Understanding what has caused your anger may lead to introspection and subsequent reassignment of responsibility. And eight, make nice. At the appropriate time, thank God for steadfastness through times of anger, for forgiving your outburst, and just call it a truce. But be aware, from time to time, anger at God may become nondescript and lingering. Recruiting the counsel of a third party may be wise when anger turns to bitterness. Conversation with a pastor or a professional therapist may be valuable. For clergy, such counseling for anger toward God may fall under employee assistance programs under work-related stress. Anyway, uh, we, it's human nature to be mad at God, especially when we don't know who or what to blame, uh, to, put a, to put the blame for bad things that happen. And God can handle that. Uh, God's just glad that you're in, you're keeping up that conversation. When you say that you're angry, God will help you through it. But don't, um, don't dwell on that or think that all of these reasons are for God. Use some of those little silly steps, but they may help you along the way. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you that you love us. Uh, we thank you that you always listen to us. Um, in times of trouble, in good times, and whenever. There are times when, for some reason, we get angry with you because we don't understand some of the things that happen in our lives and in the world. Help us to remember that we can always talk to you and help us to see that the bad things that happen aren't your fault. It's because we live in a broken world. Help us to be the ones that help put the pieces back together in this world. Use us to do whatever we can uh, to be peacemakers, to be healers, uh, to be those who, who feed and clothe and shelter. Keep us always in your care and remind us of your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.